All right, we're going to continue our discussion on uh, Newton's law. And specifically, we're going to be kind of looking more at Newton's second law. So the other day, we looked at objects in equilibrium. And so what this meant was that the sum of the forces in both the horizontal and vertical planes was zero. And therefore, uh, the net force on the object was zero. So that's what equilibrium is. It's when the net force is zero. Um, what we're going to be looking at here are objects undergoing acceleration. And this means that the net force is not zero. This means that the absolute value of the net force is greater than zero. Whether it's negative or positive, that's just the direction because remember we're looking at um, a vector quantity. So let's look at some examples and, and some of the problems that you might get with this. Okay, so here we have a, a, a 10 kilogram block in example one, and it's pushed to the right with a force of 1,000 newtons. Okay, the friction on the block, uh, I made a typo, that's fine, is 75 newtons. So we're gonna draw a free body diagram to represent the forces acting on the block, and then we're gonna calculate the net force on the block. Okay, so a free body diagram is when we used like a dot or a square to represent the object, and then we drew in all the forces acting on the block. So um, for all of these, uh, we know that the block is experiencing the force of gravity, which we represent with Fg. And at the end of class the other day, I gave you an equation um, uh, relating forces and mass and that equation I'll write over here is F is equal to MA so force is equal to mass times acceleration with gravity we know what acceleration is and you've been using that figure negative 9.81 meters per second squared uh, seemingly the whole year um, for gravity we represent acceleration with the letter G and that just represents um, uh, force on an object due to gravity. So we know that our gravitational force is mg. In here, we know that the mass is 10 kilograms, and g is acceleration due to gravity, so it's 9.81 meters per second squared. So that means that the force due to gravity is 98.1 newtons. Now, because the block is not like falling through the table or whatever it's sitting on, we know that there's an equal and opposite force opposing gravity. And we call that the normal force. I'm going to call it Fn. And so that has to be equal to the force of gravity. So that also has to be 98.1 newtons. We know that the block is being pushed to the right with a force of 100 newtons. So I'm going to call it Fp for push. And I know that there's a force of friction, 75 newtons. So friction always opposes the push. And we'll call that F sub F. So that's my free body diagram. Now, in order to figure out the net force acting on this block, what we need to do is we need to add up all the forces in the y direction and we need to add up all the forces in the x direction. Now, for this sort of uh, calculation, we're going to consider up positive and down negative. We're going to consider right positive and left negative. So if I add up all the forces in the y direction, so this symbol here means sum of so if i put sum of the forces in the y direction is equal to the normal force which is 98.1 newtons plus the gravitational force now remember i said this is the negative direction so i'm going to do minus 98.1 newtons so that's equal to zero newtons so there is no net force in the y direction because the gravitational force and normal force cancel each other out. 
if I do the sum of the forces in the x direction, I would add the push force, which is 100 newtons, and the frictional force, which because this is going to the left is negative 75 newtons. So that sums to 25 newtons. So because I have no net force in the y direction, I do have a net force in the x direction. My net force in total is 25 newtons to the right. So basically, we're just adding these vectors together. Okay, we can also calculate the acceleration of the object using Newton's second law, which is F equals MA. So we can write F net is equal to mass times acceleration. If I divide by mass on both sides, I end up getting acceleration is F net over mass. I know my net force is 25 Newtons. And I know my mass for my block is 10 kilograms. So my acceleration ends up being 2.5 newtons per kilogram, which is the same as 2.5 meters per second squared. We can look at other examples. So, so example two, we have a skydiver jumping from a plane. The skydiver has a mass of 75 kilograms with all of her equipment. The force of air resistance is 200 newtons before her parachute opens. What is the acceleration of the skydiver during the fall? Now, most of the problems we've been looking at are free fall, so we were ignoring air resistance. In real life, air is going to resist someone or an object falling. So, assuming that the skydiver is not accelerating in the horizontal direction, which that's not mentioned in the problem, we have two forces acting on the skydiver. One of them is gravity. So we have Fg, that's equal to forces mass times acceleration, in this case acceleration due to gravity. So that's 75 kilograms times 9.81 is our acceleration due to gravity. So that gives us 736 newtons. And if you're calculating along with me, I'm just rounding to the nearest whole number. There's also the force of air resistance, which is 200 newtons. So air resistance is like friction. It is going to oppose the, the uh, path of the acceleration um, or the motion. So I'll call that FR is equal to 200 newtons. Again, there's no acceleration in the horizontal direction mentioned, and so we don't need to draw any forces in the x-plane. So we need to figure out what is the acceleration of the skydiver. In order to do that, I need to use Newton's second law, which is F net equals mass times acceleration. Now, I know the mass. What I don't know yet is the net force. So we have to calculate that. And we can calculate that by adding the vectors in the y-plane. So in this case, I can do the sum of the forces in the y direction is equal to, up is positive, so 200, down is negative, so minus 736. We end up getting negative 536 newtons. Because there's no x component to the force, my net force 
is negative 536 newtons, or you could write 536 newtons down. You could also represent this with a vector. like this. At any rate, if we're to calculate acceleration, remember we can rearrange this equation down here to say acceleration is our net force over our mass. We know our net force is negative 536 newtons and we know our mass was 75 kilograms. So our acceleration is negative 7.14 meters per second squared. So that would be your answer. So notice that with air resistance, the skydiver isn't going to be accelerating at negative 9.81 meters per second squared because there is this air resistance impeding the acceleration. Okay, as I always say, does it get more complicated? Yes, but it's not that bad. So for more complex scenarios in two dimensions, we might need to consider components of force vectors, just like you were considering components of velocity vectors. So take this scenario. So you have a block sitting on a table. Attached to the block are two strings, as pictured over here. On string one, a person pulls with 25 newtons of force. And on string two, a person pulls with 50 newtons of force. Determine the net force on the block. So let's imagine we're looking at this with a bird's eye view. So we're looking from the top down. Someone is pulling north and someone is pulling east. Now, you could um, consider that there's gravitational force and a normal force, but because the block isn't falling through the table, we're going to just ignore those and we're only going to consider the pulling forces for this one. Okay, so I'm going to draw a free body diagram. On string one, we're pulling with 25 newtons. So that's this one. So we'll just call it F1 is 25 newtons. And on string two, we're pulling with 50 newtons. So F2 is 50 newtons. Now, one of the things you need to consider is uh, you have to consider this um, uh, intuitively. Now, the net force will always be in the direction of acceleration. And so if someone was to pull like this and someone was to pull like this, then the acceleration intuitively, you should be thinking the object would accelerate in this direction. So the net force should be in sort of a northeast direction. In order to figure out the net force, we're going to do the same strategy that we did with um, velocity and displacement vectors. We're going to do the head to tail approach or tip to tail. Okay, so I'm going to move one of the vectors so that the tail of one is touching the head of the other. And you want to do this in a way such that the resultant net force vector will be in the northeast direction. So I'm going to draw in my F1. So that's 25 newtons. And then tip to tail, we're going to put in F2, which was whoops, 50 newtons. If I draw from the origin to the end of my last vector, you get the resultant. And what you'll notice, in, and this resultant is my net force. What you'll notice is that my net force is in the same direction as what we intuitively predicted would happen. So in order to find my net force and the direction of it, it's just like what we were doing with 
velocity vectors. We can use Pythagorean theorem to find the f-net, and we can use trigonometry to find the angle. So my net force is going to be equal to square root of 25 squared plus 50 squared. So that's going to be my magnitude. So let's do that really quick. I'm going to round up and say 56. I got 55.9. And my angle, theta, is going to be the inverse tangent of the opposite, so 50, over 25, which is the adjacent. So I'll calculate that really quick. I got 63.4 degrees. So we would say our net force is 56 newtons at 63.4 degrees northeast. So that would be my answer. So when your net force is not perfectly on the X or Y plane, we have to look at the components of that force and then figure out the resultant, just like we were doing with velocity and uh, displacement vectors. One of the things you might get is something that looks like this. So here we have a sled being pulled at an angle. So if there's a rope, the sled is being pulled at an angle of 32 degrees. Now, when you're pulling something at an angle, it's going to move horizontally, but it's not necessarily going to be moving up or down. Um, the, I think the homework question I give is with a wagon, so you're not pulling exactly horizontally, but the wagon is still going to move horizontally. Okay, so it's not moving up or down. So our net force in the y direction, because this sled isn't going to be like lifting off like Santa and it's not going to be like falling through the snow, um, is going to, so the y net force is going to be zero, but you are going to have an et net, f net, net force, an x net force. The difference here is that your normal force, so when you're pulling at an angle, your normal force is not going to be equal to the gravitational force because the whole sled isn't going to be touching the ground or there is going to be some upward force that's associated with the pull. So first thing we're asked to do is calculate the normal force and then the net force acting on the sled. First approach is always draw your free body diagram. So my dot is going to represent the sled. Sometimes you'll see it as a box or something like that. And there's going to be a gravitational force. So we'll write in Fg equals mg. Remember, g is our acceleration due to gravity. Our mass is 20 kilograms. And g is 9.81. So that's going to be... 196.2 newtons. Okay. There is going to be a normal force, but I don't know what that is. I just know that it's going to be less than the gravitational force because there's going to be this pull. So I know that my pull force, I'll call it FP, is 27 newtons. And I know that my frictional force, which is going to oppose acceleration, is 12 newtons. I maybe should have given, given more of a pull, but we'll see. I, I, 
You're not going to accelerate backwards because of friction. So if I didn't set this up correctly, that's on me. I guess we'll see what happens. Okay. Now, in order to figure out the components of the pull force, we're going to have to break it up into its components. So I know that this angle is 32 degrees. And I can break up the pull into its X and Y components. So this is my X pull. And this is my Y pull. I know that my overall pull force is 27 newtons. So we'll move that over there. In order to calculate the X and Y components, I can use trigonometry just like we did with velocity vectors. So the X pull is going to be 27 times the cosine of 32, right? Because the cosine is adjacent over the hypotenuse. And my Y pull is going to be 27 times the sine 32. And so we can calculate those. Okay, we are going to be moving. So I'm going to round up to the nearest whole number. My X is 23 newtons. And my Y is 14 newtons. Um, I'm going to do a little aside right here just to show you exactly how I got that. So I know um, based on Sokotoa that my sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So I can write the sine of the angle. So sine 32 is equal to opposite which is at my y-pole over the hypotenuse, which is 27. In order to solve for the FPY, I can multiply by 27 on both sides. And I get FPY equals 27 sine 32, which is exactly what I did in pink to the left. And the same goes for cosine and the x. So I'm going to erase this just to minimize the crowding. Okay. So I know that the sum of my y forces is going to be zero because my sled isn't moving up or down. It's not accelerating up or down. My Y forces include, I wrote this wrong, hold on. I forgot the P here. Okay, this is freaking out a little bit. All right, we're back. So I know that my Y forces are any of the forces that are, that are in the y direction. So the normal force, the pull force, and gravitational force. So the sum of the y forces, sorry. So I know that my y forces should add to zero. So that means that normal force plus my y pull force plus my gravitational force should all equal zero. I don't know my normal force. That's what we're trying to figure out. I do know my pull force in the y direction is 14. So I can write normal force I don't know. I know that my pull force is 14. And I know my gravitational force is 196.2. Now here's the thing. 
it's in the downward direction, so we have to list that as negative, so minus 196.2. All of that adds up to zero. So now we can very easily solve for the normal force algebraically. So I can do 14 minus 196.2 is negative 182.2. And then I can just add 182.2 to both sides. And my normal force is equal to 182.2 newtons. So that answers the question for the normal force. And then we need to calculate the net force. Again, we know that the net force in the y direction is zero. So we're only concerned with the net force in the x direction. So the net force in the x direction, this means the sum of the forces in the x direction is going to equal Fpx, so the pull in the x direction, plus the frictional force. So I can say that's equal to FPX we calculated is 23 newtons. Remember we say left is negative, so I would say minus 12 newtons. And so we end up getting 11 newtons for our sum of the forces in the X direction. So our net force is equal to 11 newtons to the right. You could represent it with an, a vector, so F net equals 11 newtons. So this is the strategy we would use if you're like pulling on an angle. Your normal force will not equal your gravitational force and you'll have to figure out the components of that pull in order to calculate all these other things. Okay, this is the last one. Um, this is the most challenging type of problem you're probably going to get. Um, this is not on your homework assignment this time. I just wanted to introduce you to this idea. Here, we have a block sitting on an incline. So it's sitting on a ramp, and the, the incline is 30 degrees. Okay, the block has a mass of 20 kilograms, um, and we're going to ignore friction for this type of problem. So... The first thing we have to do is draw a force diagram to represent the forces exerted on the block. So I'll draw that right here so that you can see it with the picture. Whoops. Okay. So we know that there is a gravitational force, which we can calculate, mass times acceleration due to gravity. So that's going to be 20 times 9.81. So Fg is going to be, just like before, 196 newtons. Now, the normal force, I don't know where that came from. The normal force is always perpendicular to the surface. It's perpendicular to the surface that an object is on. So the normal force is going to be perpendicular to the ramp. And we don't know exactly what that is right now. Intuitively, you should be thinking the net force and the acceleration should be down the incline like this. So that's what we should end up getting. Okay, so this is my free body diagram, or the force diagram, representing the forces on the block. So the next thing we need to do is determine the x and y components of the gravitational force. Now this is the thing that can be hard to grasp, but what we're going to do is in essence rotate the x and y plane 
to be in line with the normal force. So what that means is that we're going to look at the x and y plane like this so that the x plane is parallel to the ramp. So this is going to be my new y and this is going to be my new x. And just bear with me because I think this is going to make sense for you once I draw this out. We can then break apart the gravitational force into its x and y components. I put these backwards, I apologize. This would be x, this would be y. That can be f, g, y, and that can be f, g, x. Now, there's geometric reasons that I can do this, and I'm going to skip them for the sake of this video, but the 30 degree angle, this angle here is 30 degrees. Um, again, I can go through all the the reasoning for that um, at a different time, but just trust me on this one. When you're looking at a ramp, the angle of the ramp translates to this angle at the origin of your force diagram. I know that my gravitational force is 196 newtons, so I can use trigonometry to figure out the y and the x components. So my fgx is going to be, this time, 196 sine of 30, because now my x component is opposite of the angle in question. And my fgy is going to be 196 cosine of 30. So we can calculate those really quickly. So I got 100, or sorry, 98 newtons for FGX and 170 newtons for FGY. So in this case, I know I'm not going to be like blasting off of. I'm not going to be blasting off of the ramp in this direction, and so my FGY is going to be equal to my normal force. So then I can say my normal force is also going to be 170 newtons. And so the sum of the forces in the y direction are, is going to be my y gravitational force plus my normal force, and that's going to sum to 0 newtons. The sum of the forces in the x direction is going to be just the one component that we have, fgx, which is 98 newtons. Notice that this is going to be my net force too, which is exactly in the direction we would have predicted it would go. So my net force is equal to 98 newtons, and it would, we can just say down the ramp. I don't know. Um, that's why we have vectors, because they kind of tell us the direction of that net force. So we calculated the x and y components of the gravitational force. We know that because we're not accelerating in our new vertical plane, the um, y component of the gravitational force should be equal to the normal force. And so all we're left with is the x component of the gravitational force in our new x and y plane, and that's going to be equal to our net force. So we can actually calculate the acceleration based on Newton's second law. So F net is equal to mass times acceleration. And when we rearrange that, its acceleration is F net over mass. I know my F net is 98 Newtons. I know my mass was 20 kilograms. And so my acceleration is 98 divided by 20, which is 
This is the hardest type of problem you'll get. We will practice these more.